Hi everyone. Today we're going to walk you through how to edit the annual planner template. So there are seven in them. There's really not a lot to edit. And I know I'm late, but I was trying to wait. I don't know why. Crowdcast is like not working um, today. There's something weird going on. Hold on. Let me share my screen. And hopefully I've made it, I've changed the dimensions so it's a little bigger. And hopefully that helps. Um, See, crowd, nope, still not going to start. It's been saying starting engine for like since 11, and it's 1107 now. So we're just going to go ahead and get started for those of you that are here. So I'm going to hide myself. I think there we go. And now you can see more of the screen. So over here, let me first just show you. I know there's a lot going on. Uh, this is the sales file. So when you go into Podia and you see the annual uh, planner templates, you're going to see one zip file. So inside of your zip file, you're going to see the multicolor, the pink, blue, and purple, the fuchsia metallic, the gold metallic, the purple metallic, holidays, a wall calendar, and then you're going to see JPEGs because I know not everybody wants to edit everything inside of Adobe InDesign, or maybe you want to create mock-ups, or maybe you have another idea on how to use these. So inside of here, these are simply JPEGs of each of those individual files so that you can then take these you can insert them into Canva just like you would any other image. And I'm not a like a Canva user, but the way I understand it, you can do that and then you can overlay things on top of it or something else. Now, just to be clear, you cannot edit these inside of Canva. There is no uh, circumstance in which the letters become editable or the colors or anything else. This is literally just an image, just like a photo. Uh, and so then you can kind of move it around or put things on top of it or whatever else it is that you want to do with this. So um, that is what you can do with the JPEGs folder. Uh, now, let's go ahead and open up the first one. So the first, I want to say the first five are pretty straightforward. They're, uh, they're simply the ones that, honestly, the ones that I first came out with back years ago. Um, so over here, you're going to see 2022. And this is just some pretty colors that I thought went together. Uh, and you can see even on my new branding for Lisa Seifert, it's like a rainbow color. I've always liked using the rainbow uh, combination of colors. I've just never done it before. So anyway, so all of the, you'll notice the days are different. So let's just say you want to make some changes to this. So the first thing you might want to do, um, usually on the annuals, they're really meant for you to add them into a another planner, whether that is your monthly, your weekly, or anything else. So if you're not familiar with how to move pages, two things. One, there is a tutorial on it on my YouTube channel, so you could just search for how to move pages in InDesign. Or you can come over here to the Pages panel. Now, if you don't see the Pages panel, you can come up here to Window, make sure that Pages is checked, and then at the bottom here where it says that that, well, it's the only page in here. You're going to right click on that page and you can move the page. Now there's really nowhere for us to move the page because we don't have any other pages in here or another document open. But let's say we open up that second document, your pink, blue, and purple one. Can skip that. And over here, let's say we wanted to move this one over to behind the other one. So you would move it to that first document, which is called the multicolor. And we'd say we want to move it at the end of the document. We'd say, OK, it doesn't hurt this file at all unless you had checked delete after moving. It will just leave it right here. And then when we come over here to this page, we'll see that our first page is still the original file page. And then the second page, we now move that other page over here. So you can do the same thing within any of your documents. Um, but let's just go ahead and talk about how to change the colors. So over here, uh, all you have to do is select it. Just make sure that the selection tool is on. And then up here at the top, and again, if you don't see the same workspace that I have, if you go to Window, you go to Arrange, or sorry, Workspace, and then you go to Essentials Classic, you'll see the same layout that I have. Um, and over here at the top, you can see that color matches this one. So you can just select that, and we could change this to let's say red. And now it's a red background. And let's say your other color is yellow. 
Um, and so those are the colors that you have, red, yellow, and I don't even know, green. Like that's your branding colors. And so maybe down here, you wanna do the same thing, but in a different order. So yellow, green, and red. And same thing over here. So you could just keep going on down the line. Now you'll see here, um, I did label these colors to correspond to what month uh, these are defaulted on. So, you know, in case you are just not sure or want to make everything orange, you could, if you like that particular shade of orange, you could just use that uh, and just make sure to click keep selecting that orange color. Now, if you wanna create a whole new color, uh, there's a couple things you could do. You're just gonna hit this little plus sign here for a new swatch, uh, which is in designs, Adobe's way of saying color. You can double click this. This is CMYK, you can change this to RGB. Um, all of these are different types of colors. I really don't get into this. It really depends on one, I don't do client work, right? So if you are someone who is a graphic designer who does client work, you might do uh, get more into these different options. Or if I have a printer that does spot colors or something else specific, then I might use these. But again, I would always check with the printer first. Uh, but if you use CMYK for print, you're pretty safe. But if you're not too worried, I mean, I prefer RGB and everything usually turns out just fine. You can use these little sliders over here. Um, to kind of make a new color, like I was saying, or you could actually, if you know the hex code, you could just type it in over here. Um, there is an eyedropper tool as well that you could use to pick up a color on this page, but all the colors on this page are already <laughs> inside of there, so you don't need to. But if you wanted to, like let's say we wanted to take November and we really like this yellow, we could come over here make sure that this is selected. Uh, go over here, right click this. There's a color theme tool, measure tool, eyedropper. Make sure the eyedropper tool is selected. And then I could select that eyedropper, just click on there, and then you'll see it has changed November to yellow. So that's another way to change the color. So hopefully now you know how to change all the colors. Um, same thing with this. If you wanna change any of these letters, like let's say I want Monday to not be green here at the top, I wanna make sure the type tool is selected, not the background. Um, and I wanna make this, uh, let's say pink, because pink seems happier and that's the color I wanna use. So now we can see that Monday is pink there, even though it's green everywhere else. Um, same thing, these uh, numbers, if you don't like these numbers and you want to change the font, when you select them, it should just bring up the type tool as a default. And then you can go over here and you could say Poppins, uh, which is actually lately just one of my favorite fonts. And so over here, you can see that Poppins is now uh, a sans serif font. Maybe you like that look, it looks a little cleaner. I can go over here, I can make this sans serif for Poppins. And so now everything, it's Poppins. Um, I can also change the color. So let's say, let's go back in here. Uh, I can go to this tool here at the top, make sure the T is selected for type. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that pink because that's that's my favorite color. And so now all of the letters are pink. So that's pretty much all you can do. I shouldn't say all, there's many things you can do inside of InDesign, but that's maybe all that you'd probably wanna do inside of this template. Um, and it works exactly the same way for this file. They look exactly the same. I just tried to give you some more branding options. Um, let's go to, okay, so now we get a little different once we go into the Fuchsia Metallics. And let me just check to make sure there are no questions. Because as we all know, I can just go on and on for hours without <laughs> answering any questions. No, there are no questions. All right. So hopefully everyone is good. Um, the next one. Oh, look at that. It finally gave me a code. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for nothing. Um, all right, so let's go back in here. So we got a few more to kind of edit. So the Fuchsia Metallics, they're all uh, exactly the same. They're just a different color. So you have gold, purple, and um, Fuchsia. So if we go into Fuchsia, you'll see, so I don't really like this look. Um, so I will do view over print preview, and then that way I can see it without those weird text boxes there. Uh, so this font here is a fancy font. Uh, let's see, what is it? It's Cantoni Basic. You don't have to use that font, but just remember someone messaged me the other day, if you open these files and you don't have the same fonts that I've used installed, then in that case, it is going to look a little weird because Adobe InDesign is gonna pick whatever it wants to use as a font. Um, 
and not necessarily the the font that you might like. So, uh, you know, again, you can always change this to whatever. But when you come up here to the top, if you want to change this font, um, I don't know why it's dropping me to the bottom. Uh, I would probably pick something that's kind of similar. It's like another script font, um, you know, or if you don't like that, uh, what's another script font I like? Um, Velvet Berries is cute. It's another cute font. Oh, see. So now if your text disappears like this and you see this little plus sign, it just means there's not enough room in the text box. You can usually double click uh, anywhere on the text box, those little X's, those little uh, squares, and then it will just accommodate to make that text box bigger to auto fit. Um, same thing here on anything that you want to change. You can go inside of here. Uh, and select all, whoops, I forgot that first row. You can select all of this and change this. So this is already sans serif font, but let's say because we're now all like Lisa and we like Poppins, we're gonna change it to Poppins. And oh, and let's say we wanna change the color. So we can go up here to the type tool and you're gonna see these gradient, what's called gradient swatches. And gradient swatches are what, um, they're like a fake color. Like I've made it a little darker and lighter in the middle. And in order to make that look like a gold foil, that's what I've done. There is a tutorial on my channel that shows you exactly how to make your own foils. If you would like a blue foil or a yellow foil or pink or blue or red. I think I said all those colors already, but you can do this with any color that you want. Um, you can also, like I said, just go back to making this pink um, or you could combine them and you could say, you know what? I really want that gold foil down here for those numbers. So anything you want to do. And again, like I said, the next ones look exactly the same. So you're going to have the gold metallic, which looks uh, the same layout as that, except it is gold. And then you're going to have the same one for purple. And that's because there are corresponding templates inside of the monthly and the daily that match that to go along with that. And so that's what you have here. All right, so let's go to holidays. And this is just a list I thought was useful. Now, these are obviously um, just the major holidays. There are so many. I know people are coming out with these content calendars or social media where there are crazy things like my favorite dog holiday, hot dog holidays. Um, cupcake holidays, right? Which is great, but um, these are just trying to do the major holidays that people probably want to track inside of a planner and maybe have account for to take the days off of work or something else. So same thing up here. And this was meant to go with the rose gold, but you can change it to go with anything that you want. Um, let's say, let's say you really like um, the gold uh, metallic. Uh, sort of look. Um, but over here on this, oh, where's our planner? Now I have too many windows open. Uh, so over here on the holidays, um, when we go over here to the swatches, we're not really seeing that. So how do we import that in? Um, it's really easy. You can go ahead and you can say load swatches. And then from over here, you could take any of those swatches. So let's say we really like that violet uh, metallic. Just go to that actual violet metallic in design file and then just say open. Don't worry, it won't open the whole file. It's just going to open the swatches. So now if I want to change this to that purple metallic and I open up my swatches, now I can see there's that purple gradient. Um, so I can select that. And now I have a purple gradient swatch. So that's an easy way to, to mix and match colors in between files. Uh, but just so you know, when we did that move from before, when we move that page, when you move a page over, it actually brings the swatches with it. So that's another way for you to import those color swatches that you may like inside of one particular planner and that you don't see in another. That's another way to get it in there. Um, and then I think you guys kind of got the hang of this on how to change the fonts inside of here. So that's Velvet Berries. 
that is not very legible, but you know, if that's the font you want to use, then that's the font you want to use. Poppins is probably a little easier. Now, another thing you can do too is let's say, um, I've seen some people do this where you're like, you know what? I really don't uh, like any of the lines inside of here. Uh, you can actually get rid of the lines as well. So up here, you can say none um, for lines, and then you can kind of just delete them from this little box up here and say, okay. And now this has no lines around the top and you can just keep going all the way down. And then this uh, same thing in the center, you'll want to get rid of that one last uh, once you get all the way to the bottom, if you don't like the lines, if you want to do a different style. And same thing, if you don't like that pink background, because now you know, you're know you doing a metallic purple, uh, maybe you want to put a purple behind there uh, as your background over here, but maybe, let's see. So it might be a little hard to read the text. So maybe you wanna change the text over here to a white. So it contrasts with the back of that a little better. And so you could then go ahead and make all of these changes as you go down the line uh, to make sure that it fits whatever new style you have. So these are really easy and versatile to kind of just make your own depending on you know, what the look and feel is of your particular planner or what you, your brand is or your colors, or maybe even, I always tell people just to put brand colors together for each product versus brand colors for something else. So we could keep going, but you kind of get the gist of it. So let's open up the very last one, which is the wall calendar, which I was really excited. I really love wall calendars. This is something new that um, I've discovered lately. We're just going to go view over print preview so we don't have to look at those weird boxes. Um, but I love the idea of printing out a huge thing on the wall and kind of doing mass planning all at once for the whole year. So over here, what we've done is Saturday and Sunday are have like a little pink highlight behind them. Again, this is just a box. So if you want to change this color to like a blue or maybe a yellow or a green or a dark blue or anything else, you can totally do that and then change these so that these match, you know, just keep going on down the line to make everything match whatever color you want. Same thing, these are, you'll see these are like the annuals that we saw before, but these are in a horizontal format instead of a vertical. And so you can change these fonts, oh, it's dropping me down to the bottom again. You can change these fonts back to whatever your new latest favorite font is like for me, which is Poppins. Um, and same thing, you can change the fonts here and then you can change the colors of everything. Um, so, you know, you can totally remake this to your own style and what you like. But I just really like this new style. It was something I had found recently um, that I really like doing wall planning. Uh, so, and you can also change this word of the year. You could say, uh, theme or uh, theme of second quarter, second half of the year, or whatever you want to say. Or you could change that to a quote or something else. Uh, so yeah, so that is this. Now these pages, just so you know, um, if we go to document setup, this is an eight and a half um, by 11. Uh, so that's not true. <laughs> this is an eight and a half by... No, yeah, I guess it is. It's an eight and a half by 11. So in theory, someone could just print this out on regular paper and just kind of throw it up on their wall. Um, and then they would not have to worry at all about having to get special paper made or anything else because some of the wall calendars are pretty big, which I do like. They're like 17 inches wide or something. Um, it's not likely you can sell that as a printable because the, then someone will have to go to Office Depot or Office Max or something and try to get that specialty printed. So that's why that is the way it is. So who is still here? Let me remove this. All right. So hopefully that kind of gave you an idea on how to edit the annual. I am going to shut this live stream down. I will be back in two seconds and we will do what is next. <laughs> Hold on. I think we're doing the monthly next. We have the, the annual, the monthly, and the daily. Yeah, we'll do the monthly next.